and write it down. Greetings, friends! Over the past, I don't know, 10 years or so, we have done a lot of experimenting, a lot of trial and error with our gardening and starting our seeds and, and starting starts and transplants and all that fun stuff that comes along with gardening. We've started seeds in all sorts of things. Again, aluminum pans, yogurt containers, solo cups. We've started them all. I remember I had a aluminum baking pan and you know, when, you, when that's all you have, that's all you have. And I filled it with soil, patted it down, and I took my spatula and cut it into blocks. So I was soil blocking then with my spatula. And we just grew it in whatever we could. Empty salad containers, you know, then you have a little greenhouse. You have your own little lid and everything. And then we would set all of that on our coffee table and push it up next to our big picture window when we lived in the city. There are so many ways that we started seeds. It's really quite ridiculous, but it's, you know, it's part of our story. And I still remember when Sayla was really little, sitting up in her high chair, right in the dining room table as we have all these seeds laid out and starting all these different starts. It was, it's pretty interesting to look back and see. Tomato seedlings and orange juice containers cut off. I mean, it just, it just proves that you just got to use what you have. And that's right. And with our experience, I want to, we want to share with you some of the things that we have learned to help you with, so that way you can get the best seeds and starts possible for you in your garden. And the first thing I want to point out is you first have to decide who you are growing for. What is the purpose of your garden? Is it all just for you? Or is it for some of your customers that you may have, whether it be through like a CSA, a farmer's market, or restaurants? And, it, and if you're serving those kind of people, ask them what are some of the things that you can grow for them. Here in our homestead and farm, we do both. We grow mainly for our customers, but we eat off the same produce that we grow for them as well. Next, you want to decide what you're actually going to grow. Compile a list of those, those seeds, those plants that you're going to grow. And as a market gardener, a couple of things that you want to consider is you want things that have a short date to maturity and items that are going to be highly profitable, things that you're going to grow and really maximize what you're growing in your growing space. So taking the factor of answering the question, previous question on who you're growing for can help you compile a list, begin pot compiling a list of what you're going to grow. And I'll be happy to share with those of you who are interested, uh, who are signed up for our emails newsletter, the items that I sell as a market gardener. And if you are going to grow crops that are, don't have a short day to maturity, the longer day to maturity crops, you want those to be high value cash crops. Like your tomatoes are one really good example in the summertime. So you're basically looking for crops and varieties that are going to be highly productive crops. And this can also apply for those who are just growing for themselves as a homesteader or a small garden in the city. You still want to select the crops and the varieties that are going to be productive for you. But if you have more area and, and your growing needs aren't specifically for production and it's more for a hobby or a more for just the enjoyment, you don't have to necessarily go with the most productive crops that are out there. And one of those is corn. A lot of people like to grow corn, but it takes up a lot of space for what you get off of it. So, and you know, you preserve it maybe by freezing it or canning it. But one other thing that we did when we lived in the city is we actually grew popping corn. And that was fun to grow and it was easy to save. So you want to think about that. You want to think about what do I use? What do I want to grow? What's just fun to grow? Um, but those are more things that you think about whenever you're homesteading. And I want to encourage all of you, wherever you are, whether you're in the city or whether you have can only just grow in the kitchen garden, just do what you can do. When we lived in the city, we were the only people on our road or in our neighborhood, that, <laughs> maybe probably the city, growing corn and tomatoes in our front yard yeah. and squash and eggplant and probably whatever else there yeah. too. Yeah. So just just grow. Just do whatever you can. If, you, if that's your goal, start growing something. And even if that's just 
a pot of basil or cilantro or you know whatever if you're in an apartment you can still grow something you can grow microgreens which is really high dense nutrition right there so you you can be limited but sometimes you're only limited by what you you think so you need to open up the box and like everybody can grow something yep some of us are limited by the excuses that we make for ourselves yeah so the next thing is make a garden plan it doesn't have to be super detailed it doesn't have to be day by day week to week all year laid out what crop you're gonna have or square foot by square Cause, foot because some people go to extreme with trying to have it all laid out you don't have to go to the extreme it could be just a rough draft so that way you can kind of have a plan of knowing based on the list that you've made where you're gonna grow it and how are you going to grow it? <laughs> and then if you're like me, you make this big long list and you try to cram it into one little <laughs> space and sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. It has to be practical as well. <laughs> yeah, 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 practical. <laughs> and with the garden plan that I come up with, it is a rough plan. It's not super detailed, but it does give me a basic guideline of and trajectory of war, what I'm going to be planning, when I'm going to be planning it, especially in the market garden. I need to I need to have some structure and order for when I'm growing things and what I'm growing. But you also want to be flexible, especially if you're a market gardener, if something's dying or it's not selling, you need to rip it out and you need to put something else in. Don't be too stuck to, to your plan and too, oh, I gotta have this plan, I gotta stick to this plan. It doesn't have to be something concrete, uh, 10 commandments or anything, but uh, uh, definitely having a plan is very beneficial. And another thing is you want to make sure you're buying your seeds from reputable companies like our number one company right here baker creek we love these guys and you want to buy quality seeds from quality companies because having quality seed is going to ensure that you're having good germination on the things that you are trying to grow and if you want to save your own seeds especially if you're on a homestead you want good seeds to save seeds from so you have a really good lineage of your plants. Yeah, we've we've bought and we have purchased from a number of companies. We've saved seed ourselves, uh, but we really enjoy Baker Creek for a number of the items that we have, like like some of our summer crops, cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, and things like that. And for our a number of my greens, primarily lettuce. I like to grow Salanova because it's a really good one that does really well in hot temperatures, hot human temperatures like we have here. I use Johnny seeds and for our microgreen seeds, which you can buy them in bulk, we buy from Todd seeds as well. But we've bought, we've purchased from other companies in the past like Seed Savers Eden as well Brothers. Eden Brothers. Is another yes. good. Uh, we haven't purchased from, but um, So True Seeds is in out of Asheville. So there's lots of good seed companies out there. Another company that I also want to mention is Haas. They have really good seeds and they have pelleted seeds, which I really, really, really recommend doing on your greens like your lettuces. If you're having to plant a whole bunch as a market gardener, having those pelleted seeds make a, makes a huge difference. So Haas has the pelleted seeds as well as Johnny's. And I'll put links to all the companies that we've mentioned. I'll put links to, to their websites in the show notes below. But out of all the seed companies that I have seen out there, no one, and I mean no one, has as beautiful and as colorful as a catalog as Baker Creek. And I love just sitting down with their catalog and flipping through and just seeing all the new varieties that they have, like this uh, nasturtium, the Bloody Mary nasturtium. I love nasturtiums and our restaurants want more edible flowers this year. So these are for sure some of the ones that I'm going to be growing. And if you've never grown nasturtiums before, they're super easy and they look great in salads. I really think you should try those. And everything from pansies and viola and phlox and all these other types of edible flowers, I'm just looking forward to getting them in the ground. And it's so neat as we've gotten to know a lot of the people at Baker Creek, hearing the stories and how they connect with people all around the world to get all these various types of seeds. Exotic ones, which I'm like, I really would like to experiment and try, which I do have a few in mind. I have a number of different fruits, fruit trees and, and uh, mini fruit trees, as some of them are. 
to that I plan to grow in the new areas that we're working on clearing out for so it's pretty exciting but they also do have a number of market gardening items as well they don't just have exotic stuff they have things that produce highly efficiently as well uh, there's a number of different radish varieties that are in their catalog that are really good as well as a number of different tomatoes cherry tomatoes as well as uh, we're looking to experiment with a number of different varieties like there's a tomato that doesn't have a lot of the seeds and juices inside so it'll work really really well for canning and for stuffing and or salsas think salsa it's more of the meat you don't get all the juice with it so it would be great for salsas uh great for stuffing and roasting in the oven things like that and i think actually chefs would really like that too and you can get your own copy of the baker creek catalog they have a free version right yes they do. as well as the full catalog which we have here and absolutely love it and we'll provide the link in the show notes below or you can probably pick it up at your local dollar general and i think some tractor supplies carry it too hmm, didn't know that mm -hmm. and then once you have ordered your seed next you either want to begin using that seed or store it properly and when you store your seed one of the things that we have done here on on our homestead is we've actually made a, a, a storage area which i call my seed library where we're able to keep the seed dry as well as control the temperature because you want the temperature to be low and cool ideally you want to freeze your seed is what they told me at baker creek but uh we are we do have our seed in a cool dry area which you want to do and if you're one of the people that like to keep your seeds super organized i got something for you so my friend nanda gave me this right here and what it is it's actually a photo storage album but look at this open it up and it has individual little compartments and you can put your seeds right in here and you can you know do tomatoes or lettuce or whatever so they're not getting all mixed up and then you can just label the outside I've seen a lot of people use these and I'm excited to you know get all of my seeds and organize them in here but I do encourage you to have a storage and some type of system for your seed so they're not just anywhere and everywhere and exposed yeah. to who know what so try to have some order to your seed collection so there you have it there's five helpful things that you can begin doing right now to help ensure that you're gonna get the best seeds for your garden this year so decide what the purpose is for your garden who you're growing for as well as make a list of what you're going to actually grow and then make a garden plan and after that buy from reputable companies and then once you get your seed either start it or store it well that's it for now hope you learned just a little bit we're just sharing with you some of our experiences that we have had and hopefully that will help you in your learning curve in starting your seeds this year let us know in the comment section below what are you planning to grow this year? Let us know. Are you super excited about it? Let us know that. Let, let us know that too. A little bit of tongue tie. <laughs> well, that's it for now. As always, be strong, grow on, and live your life without excuses. Bye, guys.